I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we're on the FM9 and I am using the newly released Firmware 8, which adds a whole bunch of modeling improvements, new features and new functions. We're gonna focus on one new feature today and that is the envelope filter in the filter block. I should mention as well, the FM3 also gets all of these new features. The firmware number for the FM3 is firmware 9. They're just offset that reflects the firmware updates across these two different devices that were released at different times. But for today, firmware 8 on the FM9, I'm using the ODS 100 clean amp model with my preferred selection of Dyna cabs with this, the 4x12 Rumble EV12L. I've got a ribbon and dynamic to blend on there. And today I'm using the large wooden room reverb, which is a lovely kind of subtle spatial effect. Let's just hear the core amp cab and reverb tone first on the neck pickup of this Strat and then the bridge pickup. <laughs> So it's a pretty fat, articulate, clean sound, even with this very bright Stratocaster. Let's go to the filter block over here. The default type is the null filter, but we're gonna come over here and select envelope filter. This is modeled off a Mutron envelope filter, probably the most famous and highly regarded envelope filter. Let's just hear it at the stock settings. We won't worry about any of these parameters. I'll do the same thing. I'll play some funky stuff on the neck pickup and then on the bridge pickup. Uh, this sounds super funky and silky. <laughs> Now, of course, an envelope filter is a modulated filter where you're using, you're playing articulation, how hard or soft you're playing to control the sweep of that filter. The first thing I would recommend tweaking on here to get a really satisfying funky filter style effect is to just tweak the sensitivity. And what I like to do is to use this detect meter over here, um, basically just bash a few chords and try to get that detect meter hitting zero on there. And that's a really easy way to get the filter dialed in for it's like full range in there. So uh, I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna use the neck pickup. <laughs> So somewhere in the vicinity of two, two and a half works pretty well on there. Of course, if you don't want that super sensitive filter style in there, just turn the sensitivity down below zero. Uh, in this case, you're not going to get, I think, as much control and articulation, but sometimes you don't want all that control and articulation, especially if you like playing on the bridge pickup. So let's hear that with the volume wide open. <laughs> Next up, you can tweak the attack and the release of the filter on there. I personally like the attack time up a little bit higher. I actually quite like it around this 20 millisecond maximum value. The release, I like at the stock settings, but we'll hear it with a very fast release and then a longer release. If you're gonna be playing a lot of fast single note lines, a 
lower release time will probably be more to your favor. If you're kind of playing chords and you want a nice big long filter sweep, try a higher release time. Uh, let's start out by increasing the release time. <laughs> Once you've got those dialed in to your taste, you can start playing around with the peak, which is going to control the resonance or the Q of the filter. At the moment, we're using the low pass filter. I always think of a low pass filter as like having a little knee at the cutoff. So this is going to increase that knee. Really cranking this is going to give you that big kind of silky vocal sound out of the filter. <laughs> course the type of filter is going to change the tone a lot. Let's have a listen to the difference between low pass which I consider the classic envelope filter sound but there's also a band pass kind of like a wah wah and a high pass in there. We'll hear the difference between low pass and high pass at these settings. <laughs> And then with the bandpass filter type, I like turning the peak down, the start frequency down, the stop frequency up, and then cranking the level. This one is really satisfying if you're gonna use it with some drive, which we'll talk about in just a second, but first clean. <laughs> Let's go back to the low pass mode on here and we're going to add some drive from a drive block. This is going to let us explore the function of the detector source. Now at the moment I've got it set to block in and there's nothing else active between the input and this filter. So the envelope filter is just listening to the core sound coming out of my guitar. What we're going to do is just chuck in the boxer crunch in front of that and this is going to change the level going into the block and hence this detect level in here. It's kind of going to mess up this finely tuned auto wah that we've got going on. Uh, let's just have a listen to what that does. <laughs> Now the obvious thing to do here would just be to swap the order of the blocks. Then you've got the filter still listening to your clean guitar sound and you can run it into the drive kind of like in a traditional rig if the amp was dirty and you were using a wah or an auto filter. We get this. <laughs> That's 
super satisfying. But what if I still want to have that block order where the filter is coming after the drive? Well, I can swap the blocks back and I can simply set the detector source, in this case, to input one. I've got my guitar plugged into input one on the FM9. Let's have a listen to the difference there. <laughs> especially on bass guitar, if you wanted to say stack some compressors, some other EQs or drive style effects before the filter, and then just set the detector source to input one. So the filter will be listening to your raw guitar signal, but it will be placed after all the other effects you want on there. So to finish things up before we go, what I want to do is uh, add the octave distortion in here. Then we're going to hear this mutated twin phaser, which is based on the Mutron biphase. I'm just going to turn the rate, depth and feedback up on this one. And then we'll hear the ring mod set to classic mode with pitch tracking on and the frequency multiplier set to 0.5. This is going to give me an octave down style effect. This combined with the filter set to input one as the detector source is going to sound ridiculously funky. Let's turn all of these off. First, let's hear the ring mod, then we'll add the phaser. And then we'll add the filter, then we'll add the octave distortion. This is super, super fun. <laughs> That has to be one of my favorite combinations of effects in there. It is so funky and dirty. Try it out for yourself. Again, the kind of quick start guide for this envelope filter would be plug your guitar in, change the sensitivity until it kind of hits the top of this detector. You can play around with the attack and release on there, but uh, the stock settings generally are pretty fantastic on this. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to save this preset right now so I remember it and I will put it up on Exchange and link it in the video description so you can try it out yourself for free. And as always, if you've got any suggestions for future Tuesday Tone Tips, let me know in the comment section below. Check the video description for more information and I'll see you next time.